Hey, what's going on team? Have some really, really good points and some information to share with you regarding meal spacing. This used to be a huge topic uh, back in the day and it kind of goes in waves, but today it's a hot topic, so I want to get into it. Now, first of all, with how to space out your meals or your feedings, is going to largely depend on the goal that you're trying to accomplish. So are we trying to improve cognitive health? Are we trying to improve performance? Are we trying to build muscle? Are we trying to lose fat? So I'm just gonna compare of the two kind of most common goals that I see, which is fat loss and muscle building. So I'm just gonna compare those two. Your goal could be different and that could change the optimal meal spacing for you. All right, so let's get into fat loss, muscle maintenance. No one wants to lose muscle. So fat loss, muscle maintenance, what is better? Is it better to space my, my calories out? I remember back in like 1997, they would teach me, uh, the nutrition people, the people I worked with, they, were, they would teach, you gotta stoke the metabolism, you gotta, you gotta eat every two to three hours. And that was my belief system for almost like longer than a decade. All right, so what would be the optimal for that? So I would argue there, and we're talking very slim margins, that an intermittent fasting or some type of fasting protocol for maintaining muscle, losing body fat. So how would I make that argument that that's that much better? Okay, hold on, hold on before you comment that much better for fat loss and maintaining muscle. Why would I say that? Well, when we fast, our adrenals go up, our, our adrenaline, norepinephrine, epinephrine go up. Well, that's a perfect natural response with our physiology is if food is scarce, we need to go and be strong to find it. Speaking of strength, two other hormones that go up in the fasted state, no surprise here, is testosterone and growth hormone. Now, hold up, because <laughs> yes, those, uh, well, growth hormone really hasn't been proven to be anabolic, uh, but it definitely helps with fat mobilization, and yes, testosterone is, is anabolic. But when I say go up, and it might be, there's literature that says they go up two to three times. That's not going to turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, let's just think logically. You're not eating. You're not going to put on muscle for that time period. So we just, we gotta be real with that. But yes, those hormones do go up, and the reason they go up, again, it's your body protecting you. They are, this is, these are protective mechanisms, all right? So if you go, say, a day without eating or you're doing some type of fasting protocol, you're gonna find your pupils are dilated, you're, you're, you've got energy, um, you, you kind of maybe feel a little bit, you know, a little bit more frosty. That's your body's way of saying, yeah, go get that lion. We need to eat, dude, okay? So very important that you don't confuse those increase in hormones with being anabolic. That, that, that just, <laughs> That's an argument some people use and it's just probably is not appropriate. All right, so, and then there are some antidotal reports, so it's proven on the hormones and the, the catecholamines, those do go up uh, in the fasted state, which is great for fat loss. Uh, there are some antidotal reports that hunger goes down. In my case, hunger goes down. Uh, when I do uh, a fast, my hunger's at bay. I love it, don't like being hungry, especially when you're a foodie. All right, now, when I say fat loss and muscle maintenance, this assumes that on a weekly average, we're hitting our amino acid, we're hitting our protein, we're hitting our micronutrients, and our calories are formulated. So basically, we're still following a macronutrient distribution designed for us in our goal of fat loss and muscle maintenance. However, we're just looking at it more as a weekly average. All right, so that would be the, far, uh, the answer as far as fat loss and muscle maintenance. I could take it a step further and say you could put muscle on under that protocol, but definitely not optimal. That is not, fasting would not be an optimal method to gain muscle. I don't care what anyone says about hormones. Again, just going back to common sense. Can it be done? Sure. I, I would argue that, uh, it, that it can, but not nearly to the extent of, we're going to talk about the lean gains phase. So we talked about the two main goals, fat loss, muscle maintenance. Now we're talking about lean gain. Lean gain is, hey, look, I don't want to put on the wrong kind of weight, but I want to put muscle on, dude. You tell me fasting will do it, I'll, I'll starve myself or I'll fast. Okay, no, I'm not going to tell you fasting will do it. In lean gains, protein distribution, again, just like with fasting and fat loss, we were talking about that much, okay, of an edge. 
we're talking about that much of an edge on the lean gain protocol. So that would be distributing your protein over three to four hour intervals. Okay, so you can hit your leucine threshold. So definitely some benefits uh, on that if the goal is lean gains. And you can also use this for fat loss as well. So that would be the every three to four hour protocol or breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then maybe some small snacks between the two. Again, we're gonna go back to thermodynamics. This assumes protein is equated, so your, your protein is still met on a weekly average, or in this case, a daily average. Your micronutrients are sound, and your calories are where they need to be to drive whatever particular goal. So if you're on a lean gain phase, where you're trying to gain weight, your calories may be formulated a certain way. If you're on a lean gain weight, uh, phase, where you want to lose body fat, while maybe putting on some muscle, then they're gonna be formulated different. All right, so now let's talk about, okay, which one is optimal? And here's the biggest mistake. This was gonna be a totally different video. The biggest mistake that people can make is to do the diet that their friend's doing, or do the, not diet, follow the same process as their friend, okay? The process that works for you that you're gonna be able to sustain, it's kinda of like the tortoise and the hare. You know, the, the, the hair was like sprinting all out. That was its process. And then it would get tired, stop, get distracted, talk. The hair had, or the, the tortoise rather, had a process that it just kept going forward, going forward. So let's, let's, let's look at what I mean by that. If the, every three to four hours does not work for you, if it makes you hungry or you just, you, you're a nurse, you work 12 hours, it's not happening, you would get fired. Well, guess what? You're gonna be, if you try that, that protocol, you're gonna be the hair. You're gonna be stopping and starting and that process will not keep going. Conversely, if say someone else is a tortoise and they're doing their fasting protocol, they're, they're going to surpass you because their process is, might be right for them. Now you can reverse it. Uh, you can say like, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna try fasting because that's what Shark does, you know, or that's what this guy does or this girl does. And it's a complete cluster and you're like, dude, this is not maintainable, but you still try to do it, you still try to do it, and then you feel like a failure because you keep falling off. Not the process for you. So what's optimal? What makes it uh, something optimal for you? First is mindset. Do you believe in it, okay? I didn't do any, I didn't do intermittent fasting or any of that for literally probably 16 years. And of course, yes, it's been out that long. 16 years, just because it didn't sound right. I'm like, fasting, I'm a bodybuilder. You can't, fast, get the heck out of here. Kick this guy out, man, get this guy out of here. He's had too much. So my mindset wasn't there. So it, it, I would find, uh, because of confirmation bias, okay, that's what it's called, confirmation bias. If I would've tried fasting eight, eight years ago, my confirmation bias would have made it not work no matter what. It, just, it wouldn't work for losing fat, it wouldn't look, work for anything, okay, because of my confirmation bias. So mindset, first and foremost. If your mindset is that you need to eat every two, three, every three to four hours, that's the protocol for you. Uh, that's what your belief is, no one's gonna tell you otherwise, so rock and roll, continue on with that belief. So mindset is number one. Two, your situation. This is actually really important, and we're, we're gonna be putting out a whole series on fasting. If you're in a high stress environment, or you're highly stressed right now, the fasting protocol, regardless of if it's optimal, non-optimal, according to science, the fasting protocol is probably not the greatest idea because just by definition, the fasting protocol puts a lot of metabolic stress on the body. That's why the norepinephrine, epinephrine, those catecholamines go up, and you're like this, okay, and you have more energy. So now I'd be worried about adrenal fatigue. So if you're like super duper stressed out, I would not, this probably might not be a good time to look into fasting because again, fasting itself is, is stress. Now eating every three to four hours, if the calories are super duper low, can also be stressful to the body, but uh, not as stressful as not eating at all, okay? Third is career. You gotta look at what your career is. Uh, again, I mentioned nurses, lawyers, people that have to go, some, uh, um, some workers that, you know, they're, they're doing manual labor or whatever, People that, they, they don't have the option to t get their Tupperware out and you know, start, start eating, okay? So what is your career? And this kind of goes along with lifestyle, all right? So lifestyle would be a big one as well as far as like support. So if you do like a fasting protocol and the kids that everyone's eating and you're like, no, I am faster, faster, sin, no food for me. 
they're gonna look at you like you're weird, man. I mean, that just does not work with the lifestyle. Now, if you were doing, say, like a dinner to dinner fast, hey man, that can rock and roll. A lot of people do that, works good, family doesn't even know the better, right? But your lifestyle and career definitely were gonna go hand in hand. And then, palate. Uh, palate is huge. I enjoy a fasting approach because it allows me to have bigger, robust meals. I like bigger, robust meals. I don't like, you know, a Tupperware with like six ounces of chicken and, you know, weighed out brown rice and some broccoli in there. And it's like, you know, I eat it and I'm like, cool, that was course one. When are the other five courses coming? You know, I want to feel full when I eat. So the fasting protocol works very well. A good in closing, a good analogy to look at it is if the goal is to get to California, so say California is your healthy place. And we could thank my friend Gus from this. He gave me this analogy and it is right on the money. So our, our goal is to get to California. That's the land of health and milk and honey. That's where we want to be, all right? And it doesn't matter uh, what approach we take, okay? We can take the lean gains approach, we can take the fasting approach, as long as, again, calories and protein and all that and micronutrients are all met. So say that you are in a situation, you've got a family of four. So it's you and your husband or wife and then two kids, all right? And I pull up in two cars and we're racing to California. I pull up in a Winnebago, you know, and then I pull up in a Ferrari, vroom, vroom. Okay, well obviously science says the Ferrari is way more optimal, okay? So you get you, your significant other, and your kids in this Ferrari and they're like cramped in and I get in the Winnebago, okay? Honk. All right, and we're racing to California, and you're like, wow, and you're like, way up, way ahead of me, way ahead of me. And then the kids are like, ah, yeah, but I don't like this, I'm getting hot. And your, your back season up because you're crammed in this little Ferrari. So you're gonna have to take like several pit stops along the way, where I'm just gonna be chugging around in my, my Winnebago, man. I'm gonna be cooking omelets in the back where the thing's on autopilot, loving life, loving my diet, and I'm gonna get to California before you. Even though I'm in a, suboptimal vehicle compared to yours. Okay, so that helps kind of solidify as what is optimal? Optimal is what you, the process you're gonna keep going with, okay? Now, if you were to switch this and you put me in the Ferrari, I'd get there in, in no time, but they would have a better journey and they would get there a lot quicker as well in the Winnebago, all right? So again, mindset, situation, career, lifestyle, palette, all go into hand in hand. And that's why if you hire someone to, to take care of you from a nutrition standpoint or be the nutrition approach, you, you gotta ask them, okay, well, what's your approach? If they have like one approach, like a one size fits all, cool, we do meal plans and you're gonna do meal plans and you're gonna do meal plans and it's like Oprah and you get a meal plan, you get a meal, everyone gets a meal plan. Okay, is that, is that really sustainable? Now for some people, that they're gonna be like, dude, yes, that's my Ferrari, that works for me. Okay, but if that's all that you're, you're pigeonholed into, okay, so yes, yeah, some people, not me, would do great with, with keto, okay? Keto is their, their thing, their keto ketosins. It is a tool that is effective for them. Uh, fasting, we kind of just talked about. Fasting is a great tool for Eric and I. Yes, power to the fasting gods. We love it. Would I do it if I were getting ready for a show? Oh, man, that's I would have to do another video on that one. I, I, I don't know, I'd probably have to make some meathead adjustments to that protocol. <laughs> you know, but right now, just trying to shed some good fat and eat some manly sized meals. All right, so anyway, there's a lot of different tools. So if you're looking for someone to help you out nutritionally, you wanna make sure that you try out different tools, you ask them what different tools they have. We're ready, getting ready to launch fasting as a tool in our group, in our nutrition group, and I think some people are gonna love it. They're gonna be like, where has this tool been all of my life? And other people are gonna be like, dude, are you kidding me? Are you off the rocker? You're a bodybuilding coaching on fasting? Holy cow, man, you, you do have Alzheimer's. So again, I'll go back to that belief system. Hey, rock and roll, hopefully this is informative to you and you got some decent information from it. You guys rock and roll.